Hello and welcome to the first installment of the Looking Up with Up42 video blog series. Uh, my name is Sean Veet, I'm the CEO of Up42. And in this series of interviews, we'll be talking to visionaries and experts in the geospatial profession, discussing the latest in cutting edge technologies and applications. Before I introduce my first guest, let me tell you a little bit about Up42. So we are a geospatial developer platform and a marketplace with the main aim of democratizing access to Earth observation data and analytics. On Up42, customers can access a wide range of geospatial data sets, uh, access state-of-the-art processing analytics from some of the industry's leading companies, and leverage our cloud computing power to create custom geospatial solutions. So let's jump right into the interview. Uh, our looking up topic today is monitoring greenhouse gas emissions from space. And I'm joined today by Mr. Earl Dodd, the chief architect and co-founder of GeoSapient based in the United States. Welcome, Earl. Well, thank you very much, Sean. I'm glad to be here, part of your inaugural video log. Thank you. And so here's a quick background on Earl. So Earl has an extensive experience in the field of supercomputing, uh, high performance computing or, or HPC and big data. So Earl's background includes government and commercial remote sensing projects for environmental and geospatial applications. His current passion is exploring greenhouse gas emissions and their impact on governance and regulation of the petroleum industry. So thank you very much for joining us all. Um, please can you start off by giving us an overview of Geosapient and the, and the services you provide? Sure, Sean. So Geosapient is an early stage company and we came together uh, to solve uh, industry problem and that's to help secure and optimize the global supply chain for oil and gas companies and most specifically uh, their operators. And, and we do this by uh, detecting, collecting and detecting greenhouse gases and apply uh, sound science to them. Monitoring greenhouse gas emissions sounds really important. I guess there's a lot of different uh, elements to it today from sort of the overall topic of, of uh, global warming and climate change uh, to more sort of pertinent topics like, uh, like the current forest fires uh, in, in the United States. So, so who are the customers actually for this kind of service? You're right, uh, the timing is perfect uh, for what we're doing. So there's basically four groups of, of customers. Our primary customers are the oil and gas companies and their operators there. But we're also very much believe that when we bring this sound science uh, to, the, to the communities, it'll also help the ecological and environmental groups uh, with that. More specifically, we're also hoping that this will target uh, good decision-making policies from regulatory bodies and we're we're seeing a lot of uptake from what I call the citizen scientists. Well, then my next question is, is, you know, if you have to think about the goal of your business and the goal of what you're trying to achieve, like how would you phrase your ultimate goal of you know, space borne monitoring of greenhouse gas emissions? It's around detection of those greenhouse gases. So you cannot mitigate unless you can detect and you need confidence in that detection. So that all leads back to the source or pinpointing where a possible leak or an emission occurs. So we see this as better timely uh, collection and detection to help mitigation. And that's not only from the operators, but it helps uh, policymakers <clears throat> uh, write uh, good regulations. Thank you. So let's dive a little bit more into the, into the technology itself. So tell me a little bit more about how do you as Geosapien detect gas emissions uh, with data from space, with satellite imagery or other kinds of data streams from space? Uh, we actually use sound science uh, on this. And we're leveraging a Sentinel-5P uh, Tropomi data right now uh, with weather data and other forms of data to, to fuse in that, in uh, which are evolving and new uh, science models uh, for this industry. And we're also using that to help tip and cue other aerial or ground systems uh, to, to go to source. So that's very important. And we're very eager what's coming online next. There's a lot of activities going on with uh, LEOs and MEOs uh, for satellites coming online. So it, it's, it's the best time ever uh, to be in satellite data. We're also very excited about the developments that are happening in the space as well. And I think this is what makes us you know, really passionate about what's happening in the industry right now. 
Uh, it's interesting what you say about uh, you know using the Sentinel 5P data to essentially plan the next level of high resolution surveys to find out what's going on. This is not the first time we, we've heard of this kind of approach, um, both with uh, greenhouse gas emissions and also with other use cases as well. You know, using the, the open source data to get roughly an idea of where the problems are, using higher resolution data, sometimes you know, airborne or in, in some cases also uh, ground sources of data to, to get a real detailed view on what's happening on the ground. Right. So, so tell me a little bit more about what are the other kinds of data sources that you guys are using alongside satellite imagery? We look at both free or, or, or government uh, funded uh, sources. We certainly look at commercial sources. We, I mentioned, I believe, uh, weather. Weather is a very important. You like to know where the plume is going so you can back forecast backcast the uh, point of origin. We also use a lot of terrain data uh, in this. We're also looking for uh, night lights. That helps when we fuse that imagery together. We look at radar because radar then will help us with forms of change detection and, and movement. So you, you just can't do it with one piece of data. You, you need curated sources of yeah. mul multiple sources of data and then you have to apply the sound science to make that data usable definitely uh, something we can we can uh, get behind i mean one of the the key aspects of up 42 and why we've been created is to help companies such as yourself be able to access uh, a wide range of curated data sets to be able to do these kinds of data fusion um, you know as you said sound science to figure out uh, where, where the problems are and how to mitigate them um, so what are the what are the other ways that you can perhaps pinpoint and detect sources of greenhouse gases that are perhaps on the horizon? There are certainly other forms of uh, <clears throat> collection capabilities. So we're very interested in what's going on uh, with, for example, GHG Sat. They've had a, a demo satellite up, but you also need the models to, and the algorithms and the ability to go through that data and make uh, sound science decisions. You've got to have the data, the science, and the people, the knowledge to put it together. You seem to be very excited with these new constellations that are going up and these new data sources. So, so can you tell me a little bit more about what are the pros and cons of using uh, maybe more traditional optical imagery uh, from, from satellites that already are, are up there and collecting imagery for years already versus some of the new gas sensors that are, that are being launched? EO is, is very good and we love the uh, ability to have hyperspectral and multi-sensors, but uh, <clears throat> so one of the challenges that we would have with EO is something called the night. Uh, it's, it's pretty hard to pick some of this stuff up when you don't have the reflectance, okay? Yeah. Uh, and that's another problem that EO has is terrain. Terrain impacts greatly the, the models. You can get a very, very large number of false positives associated uh, for, for example, when I'm using the Tropomi uh, data, and if we don't take into account the terrain, we can see areas, unless it's adjusted, that it, it's a false positive. So uh, we, we see uh, the ability to have specific instrumentation to pick up the methane or, or other uh, GHGs uh, is uh, vital to this industry. No, thanks. So, um, sorry, I have to have to smile a little bit because you know, hearing you talk about how much you rely on these various data sources uh, just makes me makes me uh, sort of really um, you know proud of what we're doing at Up42 because you, you're talking about radar data, optical data, Sentinel 5P elevation models, weather data. You know, these are all data sets that we've already integrated onto Op42 and making available to, to, to companies such as yourself. So uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy that we're, we're able to help to solve some of these problems for sure. Um, so, so Earl, where is, where is this technology ultimately headed? Now, what do you see as the next steps here? Uh, we, we see uh, <clears throat> three activities going on right now where, this, where the LEO and even MEO world is moving in this whole growth of satellites. Uh, it's commonly referred to as new space, uh, for example. Yes. So uh, the first piece is um, the instrumentation. You're starting to see a lot of uh, instrumentation. The second piece 
is there's also certain missions going on. So you can have multiple instrumentation, but have a single focus on the mission scope. The third thing that's going on is it's becoming industry specific. For example, the oil and gas industry that we're focused on is very interested in what's going on in space. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if in the near future that there isn't a consortium the, where certain uh, oil and uh, companies and operators and national oil companies get together with their own constellation or flock. So uh, it's a very exciting time. Uh, good, good, good time for uh, 42 to be collecting all that data. Thank you very much all for that terrific overview of monitoring greenhouse gases from space. Uh, maybe you can take a moment to tell our audience how they can get in touch with you at, at Geosapient. Certainly. It, the website, geosapient.com. Log in, send an email, text. We'll get in touch with you. Great. Thank you very much, Earl. And uh, let me thank you all, uh, our audience, for tuning in to our very first Looking Up with Up42 video blog. My name is Sean Wheat, and uh, please check us out at the Up42 website, up42.com. Thank you very much.